G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. So this piece needs a little bit of an introduction. Oh wow, this piece was really, really hard for me. Um, it started out nearly a year ago when I took the reference photos for my golden glass drawing. Since I already had all the lights and camera set up, I figured I may as well take a whole bunch of reference photos that day. And I used my black glass table, some fairy lights and a whole bunch of shiny objects that I had around the house just to see if I could come up with something interesting. And as soon as I saw the photos taken of these marbles, I knew I had to draw them. But I also hit a big fat brick wall. I loved the composition and the lights, but I felt that the background and the lights and darks in there were a little bit confusing and maybe not so necessary. I didn't know what to do and to be honest I didn't have much confidence in my ability to do it. So I moved on to other pieces and I left the reference photo on the back burner. Now, over the past year, I have revisited this photo so many times. I tried photoshopping some changes to the background, but I hated every single result. By changing the background, the lights and reflections in the marbles no longer made any sense whatsoever. I chewed over this reference image so many times, and honestly, I just got to the point that I was tired of thinking about it, and I decided it was time to finally get this image down on paper, for better or worse, just so I could get it out of my head. Now, the result of this decision was that I still wasn't sure how I was going to make this piece when I started drawing. So instead of having a fully drawn out image, I just had my circles placed in a few of the major features and I just started colouring. My plan was to just lay down a whole bunch of French greys and just colour until it felt right. I laid the colour down on the paper so very lightly, just slightly dusting that pencil across the page in a somewhat messy manner, pretty much breaking all of the rules of colour pencil. Instead of using a nice sharp pencil and some really deliberate colouring techniques, I just held my pencil at the very, very tip and built up those lights and shadows until they felt like they were in a place that they would fit. I was sure that this was going to be a complete failure at this point, but I was determined to keep going. Now I spent over three days working in this manner. Not because it took me that long to get the colour down on the page, but because I kept finding myself procrastinating working on it. About halfway through day two, I realised that this probably would have been the perfect piece to try out the brush and pencil powder blender, and I nearly scrapped the whole idea so I could order some and start again. But then I also kind of realised that I was just finding excuses not to keep going. So I kicked myself into gear and I promised myself that I would finish this piece no matter what. So I sat myself back down at the desk and kept building layers. Now I didn't build up a full coverage background at this point because I knew that I might need to adjust these tones once the lights and the darks of the marbles were added and I wanted to give myself a lot of room to glaze and change these tones towards the end. So once I was happy with the general lights and darks and forms of that background, I started working on the marbles themselves. Now the secret to making something look shiny is in the high contrast between the lights and the darks. So the very first thing I did for each marble was to take my time and really look for those lightest and darkest areas first. I used my white polychromos to mark in those light areas. I knew I'd be using my brush and pencil touch up texture and titanium white at the very end to make those highlights really pop, but I still wanted to take the time to map them in first. Now I had to make another decision. The marbles in my reference picture were very muted in colour, and if I wanted to match that photo perfectly, then I would have to choose some very bland colours to stay true to that reference. But honestly, that's just not as fun, and at this point I had already resigned myself to the possibility of complete failure. So I took a bit of a leap and I chose to colour the marbles with much more saturation than the photo. I was thinking that there was a possibility that this high saturation might cause the marbles to clash against that background, but it also could help those marbles stand stand out and make for a much more interesting and dynamic drawing, so I figured it was a risk worth taking. This is where the piece started to get a little bit more fun. I knew as long as I kept those values correct then I could really play with the colours a fair bit and still capture the lighting that I wanted. I was able to sit back and relax a little bit into building up the layers of colour on my page. It was quite fun to examine that reference photo for all the little tricks that the light was pulling through the glass. Not only was the light of the window and those fairy lights reflecting off the surface edges of the marbles, but it was also twisted through the sphere of the glass and then changed once again as it fell onto the glass table. And I found it really relaxing to examine each sparkle of light and trace it back to its source through the image. 
This is when I knew I'd made the right choice to keep those background elements in. Without them, these lights would have just appeared to come from nowhere and the whole piece would have been much less satisfying for me to draw. Finally, I moved on to that last blue marble. This colour was so intensely different from all the other marbles that I knew I would have to add some of that blue to the less brightly coloured balls. It would have made the piece completely unbalanced to just have that one blue ball just sitting to the side without adding some of that around the rest of the piece. But there were no examples of how that blue may behave in the reference photo. So I just added a couple of touches fairly randomly to the curves of the other marbles. And I also added some of the golds and the greens of the first marbles to the curve of the blue marble in an attempt to bring the whole thing together. With all of those marbles finally in place, I could start to appreciate how this drawing might come together. I started to like how the vertical elements of that background played against the horizontal layout of the marbles. And after a full week of drawing, I was finally starting to see how this piece might work. And I started looking forward to seeing the finished result. I used my brush and pencil touch up texture and titanium white combination to start adding in those brightest sparkles of light. I used a rigging brush to add the highlights along the edges of each marble and then a nail art dotting tool to add those tiny spots of light inside the marbles. With all of these tiny sparkles of light in place the whole idea started to fall together and I was finally seeing what I wanted to see on that paper. I allowed that mixture to dry completely and then I added a little halo of some of that yellow light around each sparkle. Finally I went around the background and I filled in any patchy areas and then I brought some details across the marble's reflection to show some imperfections in that glass table surface and I was ready to call this one finished. So here's the finished piece. Um, I've gone on ahead and I've mounted that watercolour paper to a 6mm MDF board which I've just sewed quite heavily to give a nice layer of protection between that MDF and the paper and then I've given it several coats with a gloss varnish which you might be able to see if I tilt it to the light properly there and that just gives the whole piece a really nice finished sort of look. I really like these pieces finished off that way. Um, this one, I'm really glad I stuck it to the end. It challenged me in so many ways and I can't tell you how many times I was ready to just screw the whole thing up in a ball and, and call it a day. But I persevered and I've ended up with a piece that I'm actually really proud of. Uh, the original for this has already sold and I've already got several orders for prints lined up which is really exciting and it leads me to a little announcement. Um, I recently spent a disgusting amount of money on a brand spanking new professional photo printer. And this means that I'm going to be able to make my own prints at home without relying on an outside source. And so far, with a little bit of tweaking, I haven't, I don't know how to use it perfectly yet, but so far, I am blown away by the quality of the prints that this thing has given up. Um, even on the cheap sort of photo paper, they just look amazing. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be playing with some settings and experimenting with some different papers, some different glosses and some different surfaces, just to sort of see how to get the best result out of this thing. But in the meantime, I do have my remaining stock of my A4 prints from the print shop um, available at a discounted price over on my Etsy site. So if you're interested in picking up one of these now is a really good time to head on over and grab one. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave a like or a comment to tell me what you think and to any artists out there who have made your own prints before please feel free to leave some suggestions for paper types or any tips you might have. I need all the information I can get at this point. If you've liked this why not hit that subscribe button and once again thank you so much for watching.